What's up guys, my name is Casey and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. This week we take a look at an old Warhammer Fantasy model, Skyla Anfengrim. I purchased this model on eBay for $20, which is a pretty great deal considering that this model is 50 bucks new. I've been looking to pick this model up for quite some time. I've always liked the way that it looked, so I was pretty excited when I saw this come up on eBay. Of course, the model has a coat or two of paint on it, so we're going to have to throw it into a bath to get that off before painting. I start the model by throwing him into a sonic jewelry cleaner and use LA's Totally Awesome. The sonic cleaner is from Amazon and fairly cheap at $29, but it still works really well at turning that paint into tomato soup. After the paint has been softened, I come in with a toothbrush to get as much off as possible before putting him back into the dirty bath water for another cycle. Normally, a model only requires about 20 or 30 minutes to be fully cleaned, but depending on the paint and how thick, it may require a little more elbow grease. Skyla took a little over an hour with scrubbing about every 10 minutes. There was a little bit of primer left over at the end, but honestly, I've never found that to be a huge deal, so I primed over it with Badger Stenoris Black and gave him a pretty heavy zenithal spray from above using Liquitex Titanium White. I'm going to start by prepping the base for later using a variety of red, orange, and yellow. To build up the color, I wanna make kind of a lava style base. Then I'm going to cover over the whole thing with Games Workshop's Agrelin Earth and let that dry. Moving on to the model, corn red will be the first color we lay down. This red has a really nice saturation to it, it's not too bright, so it will give us a place to go for the rest of our highlights. For the next step up in color, I'm using Mephiston Red. This red is going to end up being the color that comes through the most, and I'm going to shoot this from the top down to catch all of the raised details and leave some of that corn red in the lower shadows. It gives a nice start to a gradient that will go from a deep red all the way up to a kind of a bright orange yellow. In order to push this gradient even further, we need some Fire Dragon Bright. This will be our main highlight for the model. Fire Dragon Bright is one of my favorite colors from GW. The translucent properties in this paint make it perfect for gently highlighting red. It gives sort of a glow to the model. I'm going to use this to gently highlight from the top down once again but try and be a little more controlled with the location. I want to tilt the model back even more so that we're only hitting the very tops of that raised detail. This will give us a really nice fiery highlight and a good roadmap to follow for doing a little more highlighting with a brush. 
We're going to use Druki Violet to wash all of the skin. Now I'm going to water this down just a little bit and brush it over the entire surface of the skin. This will give us a nice purple in the deepest recesses and take down some of that Fire Dragon Bright, bringing it a little closer to red. Really, I'm using it to give more depth and as a filter for all of our reds to tie them together. Chaos Black through the airbrush will quickly take care of all of the hair on Skyla. I'm also going to let the black spill over just a little bit onto the skin so we have a nice transition from the red into that black fur. Vallejo Metal Color Copper, or his Spiked Collar. While painting the collar, I started to notice some weirdness with this model. Now I've been told plenty of times that Finecast has a lot of problems, and until now I've not actually run into too many issues. But with this model in particular, I can see what people mean. The way this model looks on the Games Workshop website is pretty different from this actual model, and not so different to make me think that it's a recast, but imperfections in the collar, some of the finer details in the spikes, and particularly on that little snake tail monster, they're really, really noticeable. The point is, I see why people have such an issue with fine cast models, and honestly, Forge World models as well. Let's move on to some Rhinox hide as a base coat for the bony spikes on the model. Using this dark brown will set us up for a pretty cool look, and eventually we'll come back to these and start to add lighter and lighter bone colors, which will give us a cool striated bone without really using any washes. It makes them stick out a little more and gives them more contrast in the end. I'm going to use Harvester Flesh for the gums. Alright, now let's get into some brush painting and really bring out the details on this model. I'm going to start by using some Fire Dragon Bright to highlight all of our brightest points. This step always gives me the most amount of joy. Getting in close with the model and really looking and finding those little pieces to bring attention to, you can really take your model to a much higher level by spending a good amount of time in this stage. If you're new to painting, this is the part that seems kind of the most daunting and challenging. How much paint do I put on? Where do I place the highlights? And of course, why does my model look stupid after I put a few layers of paint down? Here's the thing. One of the biggest differences between newer painters and painters that have been at it for a while is knowing or having a very good idea of how something will look before you've done the work. Layering highlights is a perfect example. You start by layering on a lighter color to a group of muscles, or at least, you know, for this example. At first, it looks kind of like hot garbage, and that can be really discouraging. But if you take your time, build up those layers across all of the muscles on the model, all of a sudden it doesn't look half bad. What it comes down to is that you can't look at each section of your model in a vacuum. The skin or muscles or whatever it is on your model doesn't exist by itself. It's part of a larger whole. Just keep working through your model, look at it, think about what the model will look like if you keep painting. What will the muscles look like if I paint them all like this? And so on. The more practice you get, the better you will be at seeing the picture that's in your head. So don't get discouraged too quickly. 
you're probably doing a better job than you think. Moving on to the bones, I'm going to use progressively lighter and lighter bone colors and smaller and smaller lines. And I'm going to paint those lines in, making sure that the base color is visible at the bottom to give us a nice separation from the skin. And I'm going to work those lines into a bright point at the top. And it really just gives us a nice look for these bones and makes them stand out a little more than if I had just painted them white and washed them, you know, with a sepia wash. Nihilic Oxide to weather the collar. Not only will this give us a nice look for the copper collar, but it brings in some good color. The oxide stands off of the red and brings a lot more attention to the face of the model. Plus, I really like weathered copper. To finish off this model, I was trying to make a lava base. It seemed like it would fit, but I kind of made a mistake in the application of the agrelin earth. If it's too thin, the cracks will be really small and you won't be able to see the color underneath. So I decided to pivot a little bit and go for more of a kind of a blasted wasteland with a little bit of a twist. I used a cutout of a corn symbol that I printed out on my printer as a kind of a stencil. Then I shot red contrast paint over it to give it that kind of bloody look. It made for a pretty cool base that kind of hammers home how corny this model really is. It is a giant red ape. Yeah. All in all, despite the problems with Finecast, I really like this model. I've been wanting to paint one for quite some time and I think it will fit perfectly into my Age of Sigmar corn army. Oh yeah, before we wrap this up, check this out. I got this on eBay the other day and I really want to paint it on the channel. And it's probably going to take a good amount of time, so I think the plan is to actually probably skip a week and take a couple weeks to really put some time into this model. I don't want to rush it, so we'll kind of see how it goes, but that's the plan right now. And if you have any suggestions as to the colors or the house or the whatever for this guy, leave a comment down below. Thank you for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescues. If you liked something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.